In today's episode of Vice Versa, we're going to be talking about the solar industry laying out their wish list for Joe Biden's administration, Tesla getting included in the S&P 500, as well as a little bit of a boost from Morgan Stanley, Tesla adding automatic payments to their destination chargers, Arrival going public on the NASDAQ, and GM having a little bit of a recall. So I'm here with uh, Ricky, and today we're going to be talking about all those things. So Ricky, why don't you tell everybody where you are? <laughs> Yeah, so this is episode two. Um, we had to keep the momentum going, and I'm actually visiting my mom and dad in the Bay Area. And um, so I'm in my car because I couldn't think of any other quiet place where I could actually do this. So episode two is going to have to deal with my audio and my light levels and stuff, and uh, the show must go on. <laughs> Broadcasting live from your Model 3 on location. That's Ricky. Absolutely. Yes, I'm in my Model 3, which is a very quiet, very comfortable. I have my seat heaters on because it's getting kind of chilly and uh, I'm doing all right. So you one talk thing about... I want to try in this format is we want to try to keep ourselves on time a little bit. So I will run a little timer and see how we do, but we'll try to keep this thing uh, to about 30 minutes, right? Matt, you want to yep. get started? Sure. Well, okay. The first one up is about the solar industry. They put together their wish list of things that they want the Biden administration when they get into office for what they would like to see over the coming next few years. And they ran through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, they actually, this is the PDF they actually put out for their hundred day agenda. Uh, and the recommendations they put together are what you probably expect, but it's really kind of no nonsense stuff that they're putting together. Um, they're recommending things like, uh, 20% of electricity coming from solar by 2030. And for that, they want to remove the Trump tariffs uh, that he put into place. They want to, the tax credit that's phasing out right now, which the tax credit right now is at 26%, I think it is. And then next year it goes to 22. They want to roll that back and extend that out a few more years and put it back to 30% to give themselves a little more leeway. Um, they also want to put a tax credit in for battery storage, which is something I'm a huge fan of. I really want them to do that. Uh, these kind of things are, and one of the things that they drive home is this is going to mean jobs, 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 which is their big sales pitch to the administration. And it's true. I mean, it's like if you look at the numbers, like the coal industry is declining. There's less than 50,000 workers in coal, but there's like 250,000 solar workers. So this kind of thing is just going to cause that to balloon even more. So it's like I'm a I'm a huge fan of what they're proposing, and it's going to be really interesting to see what the uh, they do once they get into office. But Maddie, my my daddy was a coal miner, and my daddy before him, and I find what you're saying very offensive. Now <laughs> um, it's interesting. I forgot we have a new administration, uh, right? And they're going to have their own agendas, and things are going to change. Um, I can't imagine a a sharper turn than what's happened over the last four years. We, I mean, Trump, President Trump pretty much rolled back everything that was done um, in terms of environmental um, efforts and stuff. So, right, new president, new wish list. By the way, if I, I got some solar this year and I'm going to get the 26%, uh, am I going to be able to write somebody and get the rest of my money when they <laughs> push it back up to 30%? That's a good question. Or am I, what if you fall into that window on? where you're in that valley of the 22% before it goes back up to 30? That seems like... You got kind of robbed. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little torn on this one because actually, as I was watching the solar industry and seeing that the, the tax credit, the ITC was fading away, I kind of likened it to what has happened with Tesla where they've hit their numbers for their cars and they don't have any more uh, tax credits and they've lowered their prices. They're incredibly competitive and they're doing great, which is really the point of tariffs. It's, it's to give a company a new technology, uh, kind of a, a burgeoning chance to get started and for solar i can't help but feel like we're at a point where we don't really have to incentivize it any further it completely makes sense so i would have thought that we would be in a position where we wouldn't need it but at the same time seeing that we're still going to extend the credit probably is better for all of us long term but yeah what do you think I, I, it's like they're we don't need it forever but i feel like if we just had a few more years not just next year but like two or three beyond that it would kind of really allow the industry to kind of gel on these low prices, like with solar, the with Tesla solar price, which is $1.49 right now. It's like, we need to help the rest of the industry get to that and better. And then it becomes a point where you don't need it at all. So it's like, I think we're right at the cusp, but then when it comes to battery storage, that's still crazy expensive. And that really does need 
some incentive and some help to try to get that a little more affordable. So it's like, even if you phase out the solar, I think they really do need to put some kind of energy storage in place because that's kind of the missing piece of the puzzle we have right now. It's like, without that, it's it doesn't matter how much solar you put in if you can't store the energy to use it for when we need it. So it's like, it makes a lot of sense to do the energy storage incentive. Yeah, so if you think about it, in California, I mentioned this in a couple of my videos, but I was talking to some operators of, of <laughs> the power grid and just the large scale like forecasters. And they've mentioned that like at peak times of the year, especially in you know like June, July, in California, we're curtailing our solar generation, meaning we have so much solar that they're just throwing it up. They're wasting yep. it. And we need, uh, genera- we need storage in a bad way. So what's interesting is if you imagine we have a pool of money and we're going to allow that pool to be used for solar panels instead of batteries, in a way we're taking from really what's critical, which is the storage. Um, so if money was infinite and we have all the money in the world for all the tax credit payout, then fine. But if we have a, a finite resource, I would say we should really be prioritizing storage because in the last 10 years, we've done an incredible job of incentivizing solar and look at in California, everybody has solar. My parents bought their house, had panels on it. All new homes in California come with solar and around the country as well and the world. But storage is still lacking. Oh, there's the timer. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably not do that this time around. But yeah, I was to say, yeah, don't, so don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, um, yeah, I would say we need to have that same level of effort for storage now. Yeah. Do you think we could do both? Keep solar credits and generation? Or do you, we need to- No, you made a very compelling point. If you're looking at it from how much of a budget you need, I think if you're going to focus on one of the two, to me, it's energy storage. I would do that first because solar has gotten to a point where it probably can be just fine on its own. Energy storage really still needs the help. So it's that I would agree. Yeah. Fine point, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. One point for and- Ricky. <laughs> Speaking of the debate shows, I was thinking about the spark show. I think part of the interruption where they have the timers on the on the screen and they're they're very strict to their timekeeping. I you know, that's kind of what we're for, the format we're trying, but we're still figuring this out. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready for the so next we, topic? Yeah, let's go to the next one. Bring right. it up. So the next one is Tesla's inclusion into the S and P five hundred. This is something that a lot of the Tesla investors have been thinking about. They were passed up last time around, and they will be now be included uh, in December. This is a big deal. Their stock price had a nice little bump. Uh, you're a shareholder, I'm sure, and most of the people who own Teslas also have their stock, which is a cool, <coughs> cool thing. It's a cool. I don't know that it's that common. People who buy iPhones don't have Apple stock. Maybe they do, but this is one of those cool things that people who buy the Teslas believe in what they're doing, and they're long-term holders. Which gets into my second part which is being included in the S&P 500, one of the requirements is that there's a, a pool of floating shares. That way, that it's an index fund after all. So if people are going to start mutual funds that that track the S&P 500, there have to be enough shares floating around. And with Tesla, if you look on Twitter, you'll see people who buy Tesla shares are holding them. Their, their plan is like, I'm holding for 10 years. So as a result, there's going to be potential issues with enough supply of open shares to be purchased. But They'll, they'll work through that. And this really gives a lot of validation to Tesla as a company, showing that like a battery powered EV is not just doable now, but they're the largest automaker by market capitalization. And it just kind of leads to every other company thinking, look what they're doing. We have to follow suit. So if they had no plans before of going electric or cleaning up their act, I think this will drag them kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I own some Tesla stock. I also own like a little bit of Apple stock. It's like I invest in companies that I think are not only doing something good for the world and are putting something good out there, but it's like I'm a long-term investor. It's like I invest in the companies I think have a huge bright future. And so I own some Tesla stock, not a lot, just a little bit. That stock split though gave me a nice little extra shareholder there. Um, I'm not a huge investor though. So it's like, I didn't really kind of understand what the big deal was with being in the S and P 500, if it really makes any meaningful difference to Tesla. So from my point of view, it was kind of like, okay, they're in the S and P 500. What, what's the big deal? Well, my, my stock price is going up, <laughs> but other than that, I'm not yeah. sure what the, the big benefit is of the, being in the S and P 500. 
Do you have any idea? Like, yeah, I mean, I think it just generally gives like, you know, retail investors like us, we might buy shares, especially people who love Tesla, but big institutional investors are going to see this move and say, okay, this gives the company a sense of stability that I think previously was maybe lacking. Tesla is kind of a black box to people and you have to really have a stomach for Tesla stock. If I actually remember buying their IPO and I helped a couple of years I've sold and bought over the, over the years, uh, my, my current shares I've had for a few years now, but there have been some roller coasters. We have gone, <laughs> you know, 20, 30% up. We've had like a 500% year and then it'll tank and rise and Elon comes out and says, I'm going private and buying at 420, yeah. <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. You have to have a stomach for for this. And being added to the, the S&P 500 index is a big deal because it's really the, 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 the index is promises to give a good visual of the nature of our economy. They have all kinds of different industries, pharmaceutical and tech. Um, and by the way, Tesla set a record for being the most valuable company ever added to the fund. So to the yeah. index, so another record for Tesla. And let's not lose sight of the fact that they're encroaching upon half a bill, uh, half a trillion dollars in, That's in, insane. In, in market value. It's absolutely insane. So long term, I think this is going to really boost like the institutional investors and give cool. a little more credence, a little more balance and and stability to the to the to the stock. speak speaking of that is the other side of this which um is the morgan stanley <laughs> um increasing their sales t- they're increasing their target for tesla and a big part of that was the inclusion in the s p 500 and they're targeting i think it's 540 dollars. i think it was yeah 540 dollars for the share price which to me still seems way too low but it's interesting to see what they did was they finally, finally have taken into account that they're a software company. They've been evaluating them basically as a car company, and now they are finally looking at them as for the full self-driving package and the $10 a month you know, entertainment system subscription. And they're understanding that there is a software as a service aspect to the company that they weren't factoring in properly. And it's like, it's insane that it took them this long to figure that out when all of us have been saying this all along, you're completely undervaluing what they are. And I still think they're undervaluing what they are, but at least they're getting on the right track now. Bold claim, right? To say they're undervalued at 500 billion, but I think you're right. And as far as, again, if you, the news has completely shifted. I was reading an article on Fox business who um, <laughs> typically haven't really, I don't think have valued what Tesla is doing very well. But suddenly you're in the SP 500 and people look at you with a level of credibility. That's exactly what it is, right? Yep. And and their their article was, yeah, maybe Tesla's not just a car company. And really it matters because it's all about kind of where you trade. So if you're a young <laughs> tech startup, uh, like for example, I work at Salesforce. So Salesforce trades at a very high price to earnings ratio because people know this tech can easily scale. You can have 10 more customers this quarter or 100 more customers. It doesn't really change your underlying business. Whereas for a car company, you have to mass produce more cars. Yeah. Can you produce a thousand more cars? That is not an easy feat. You have to spend huge capital expenditure, CapEx. And so it doesn't scale very well. So car companies trade at very low price to earnings ratios. Tech companies trade at very high values. So when you think of it like that, suddenly people go, okay, now Tesla makes sense. Because I talk to people and even now everyone says Tesla's absurd. They're, there's no way they're worth this much. They're worth more than GM and Ford and and it's like, that is true. But look at how Amazon is priced or look at how Apple is priced. And I think yep. if you think of it that way, it's interesting. And we talked about last week, tying into episode number one, the $10,000 price tag for full self-driving. Yeah. And um, suddenly you realize that even the people who have already bought Teslas are still, there's still more money to be made. So yep. software company, tech company, absolutely. Yep. Big news. And uh, for all the people watching who are, Tesla investors, let us know in your com- in, the, in the comment section. I would love to know like how long you've been holding, like what year, and what was your buy price. That's just a fun little game. We'll, we'll <laughs> see in the comment section, and yeah. hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm curious because I bet you you'll find people who bought like in 2013 and have never looked back. I I, yeah. I, I can guarantee you we'll have one person at yeah. least, but without a doubt, cool. very exciting times. Well, moving on to the right, next, next, Mr. Next Farrell. one is this one's a small one this won't take very long but 
Tesla adding an automatic payment to chargers for like apartment buildings. This one, it's, it's so odd that I got <laughs> a little excited about this, but Tesla's wall charger, their Gen 3 version of the wall charger has Wi-Fi connection built into it. So destination destinations like hotels, apartment buildings, that kind of thing can now start charging for the charging. And Tesla is going to take care of the payment system. So Tesla owners could plug in at a hotel, an apartment complex, and then they get charged whatever the fee is to charge your car. That's a huge incentive for apartment owners and property owners to install these things in parking lots and on their buildings. And this is like a huge incentive because they can make a little bit of money by doing this. Where today it's basically out of their you know, goodwill to put it up uh, as a customer perk. But like apartment buildings aren't going to be really looking to do this, but they will if they could charge, you know, 20 cents a kilowatt hour or whatever it's going to cost. So it's like for me, this is like super exciting to help broaden the reach of destination chargers for people who live in apartments. You know, when that is that's fascinating, I actually didn't even know about this until you put it on the board. But when the Gen 3 charger came out, people had mentioned, well, it has Wi Fi, it's interesting, what are they going to do? Um, people yeah. kind of kind of theorized maybe it'll be vehicle to grid or like the VPP virtual power plant stuff, which it, it could possibly all do that in the future. But this is fascinating. So now if any motel hotel wants to add Tesla destination charging, it's another little way of making money. And these are big batteries. There's, there's some money to be made, especially considering yeah. that um, you're going to have turnover and everything else. So if Tesla's lead in charging wasn't big enough, here we go. <laughs> and Matt, you had a video on this very topic. Was it two weeks ago? You want to, Want to yeah. give us a little bit of a, a breakdown of what you what you found? Yeah, well, what I found was you know Tesla, not surprising, is way in the lead in the industry. It's kind of like how Apple has of if you t if you look at individual makers of phones, Apple is the leader. But then if you like put everybody that's an Android together, they make Apple look super tiny. That's basically what it is in the charging space. Tesla just dominates as an individual charging network. It's just huge way in the lead and everybody else is kind of racing to catch up and there are ones that are starting to catch up like evgo uh electrify america here in the united states it's like those are catching up but tesla has just such a commanding lead as far as fast charging is concerned it's kind of not even funny uh and so my video dives into that in great detail so this expanding it beyond fast chargers this could really make their level two charger network just substantial, which is <laughs> what we need, especially for people who don't own their homes or can't install a wall charger where they live. So it's going to give a lot more opportunity to people. It's, it's It gets me so excited. Yeah. Here in California, you can drive for eight hours and still be in California. If you drove for eight <laughs> hours where you are, you'd have to go, probably go through like five states, right? So people drive a lot yeah. here. And every time I make this drive, so I drove from San Diego to the bay area it's about 500 miles 450 miles um it wasn't crazy a couple of years ago to think that you wouldn't be able to do that in, a, in an electric car i do it it's a breeze autopilot drives itself and i was just thinking the the superchargers are plentiful to begin with and there are new ones propping up and there's gonna be a couple of new ones here in california just time for the holidays when a lot of people drive from northern to southern cal and if all that wasn't enough now, the destination aspect of it, because yesterday when I got to my parents' house, I, I reached here with about 30 miles of range left. And what I do, I just plug it in in my parents' garage and they let me park in their garage and I come and it was fine. But if you were driving to a hotel, you were driving to a destination that wasn't so easy for you. That's good to know that in the future, they're going to have tons of options in terms of how to get yourself filled up for whatever comes next the day after. So. Yep. This is pretty big news. I actually didn't think about it too much, but there's that final leg of your trip. The superchargers kind of get you get you home, but if you could pull into a hotel, plug in, and the next day you're charged <laughs> up, that it's pretty I got I got to tell you, like when I go traveling now and go to hotels, I find hotels that have Tesla destination chargers, and I will go to them over other places because of that. What? How do the numbers work out? Like, what percentage of them do you find that to be the case versus like a seventeen? It's it's a small percentage. It's like I, off the top of my head, maybe twenty or thirty percent of the ones I've looked at have them. But it's like they they tend to be the big chains, like a Holiday Inn or something like that. They tend to have them. 
So it's, they're places that you're willing to stay at. And it's like, I will absolutely choose that over 10 other options. Cause it's just so convenient to pull into the hotel, plug in, go into your room. It's like, it's just have a full tank when you come out the next morning. It's great. It is a really big deal. Cause otherwise you have to be away from your family or your destination to go to a supercharger and sit there for 20, yep. 30 minutes, which doesn't sound that bad, but you're on vacation. The last thing you want to do is sit around by yourself alone, uh, charging your car. So I agree. That's a big, <laughs> that's a big deal. Um, I hadn't really thought about it because I don't really, well, we're all in COVID, so we're not really traveling much, but <laughs> eventually we will. And that's good to know. Yep. We should talk more about kind of the nature of charging networks. Maybe in episode three, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So next right, up, what's up next? Next up is uh, this one, the um, arrival, getting listed on the NASDAQ through, I think it's a reverse merger that they're doing to get onto the NASDAQ. Um, this All one- All suddenly, this is- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is, this is, this has me super excited. I, I know you're talking to them, aren't you? Yeah, on yeah. maybe Monday. I'm gonna be talking Monday, to them yeah. next week. It's like, I'm very excited about this. This is really big news. Really cool tech EV uh, startup in London, one of the biggest startups in the UK. And yeah, they're taking advantage of this reverse merger um, the, of an SPAC. Um, and it is, it's fascinating that this seems to be the avenue that everyone's <laughs> taking. And one of our viewers will know the answer to this question, but leave us a comment if you if you know, like what has led to the rise of the SPAC? I'm, I'm curious, because I mean, it makes sense. Um, and I'm sure they, existed before and people use them before but it seems like every new ev company is going this route and so i'd like to know do you know matt i was doing reading up on this earlier and it's like my, my understanding of this is really thin <laughs> but it's faster to get to this stage by going this route cheaper to do it this route but there are downsides and it's like i was trying to wrap my head around what the pros and the cons are and why why you do this versus another one or but it, it does seem like this is faster and cheaper to go this route which is why they probably are doing it. Yeah, and we we mentioned all this kind of news because if you're like me and man, I think you are in terms of like investing, I put my money where my mouth is. If you watch our channel, my channel or Matt's channel, we're excited about this stuff. Yeah, um, genuinely. This is, it's not just like, oh, you know, the, a Tesla's a cool car and it's fast. Like this is really important to us. So I put my money where my mouth is. I'm, I had an interview on my channel with uh, Mark Frommeyer from... Arkimoto. And like I mentioned to him, like I'm, I'm a shareholder and they had a huge day today. They were up 30%, by the way. And so when, when good things happen in the industry, it's good for everybody because when people see good news and they see EVs thriving, that's when we're going to have that like deluge of tons of options and people really making the switch, um, which I think is starting to happen, but you know, we're still kind of early days in, in that regard. So what's really cool about arrival is again, they're targeting another part of the market. They're making buses, they're going to kind of transform how like the inner part of the city operates, not not the suburbs and travel like you would with a <laughs> sedan. But and that's important. If you look at like places like the UK and China, the pollution and, and smog is a huge deal. And COVID has showed us how a city would look or smell or feel if people weren't all piling up on top of each other and commuting and burning gas all the time. So I think this is one of those moments where we're going to want to go back. And when people say electric bus, yeah, sign me up for that. I want my London, I want my um, New York, I want my Boston to stay clean. And so I think they're going to have a, um, a pretty good future. And I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to them because yeah. they've got some cool tech. They've got some patents around some of the about, around some of their technology. And uh, I think that's going to be a pretty big deal. I'm definitely going to be looking at buying some buying some shares when they go IPO. Yeah. So, so am I. Or when they, they, when they, they are listed. Yeah, their, their approach is so different from every other EV maker I've seen. It just like, it may be kind of do a double take of like, what what are you doing? Why are you doing it this way? Like, no, it's like people criticize Tesla for the way they went about building their cars. And it's like arrival to me is doing the same thing where it's like radically different from what Tesla did. And it's like, I hope it's successful. It's a really unique take of how they're rolling these things out. And it's not just buses, it's delivery vans. It's like, imagine every UPS truck that's driving by is one of these things. It's like, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a huge savings for the companies that are using those delivery vans. It's gonna be less pollution. It's it's like it's gonna be a win 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 for everybody when we start doing more and more of this. It gets it gets me genuinely super excited because I've said it before. I'm not a Tesla fan. I'm an EV fan. <laughs> I want more companies like Which, this coming out. 
that's going to be a controversial take or, to some people, but I'm, I'm I know <laughs> I, I think it's really important to love and give them a chance. There's going to be some failures, but like I hope that we have tons of new options. By the way, a uh, little plug for both of our channels: we're going to have content on arrival, in depth, talking to people from the company, some VPs and things. And so I'm curious. I'm can't wait to watch yours as well because there might be a little bit different based on who we speak with. Yeah, we will have videos on arrival, and they're kind of cool things. And just to kind of get a you know get a little cliffhanger to get your attention, they have this really cool idea of micro factories where they actually kind of offload the manufacturing processes, and then they have the kind of the final assembly done. And so they they're able to maybe even reside in existing factories, and they're able to yep. kind of do some interesting stuff. So should be a fascinating series, and I hope you uh, watch them both on our channels when they when that comes out. Couldn't agree more. That's exactly why I'm interested in them. It's like instead of Exactly. bigger the, factories they're going smaller in. factories it's like that's so cool it's it's so it's such a cool concept all yeah, right i think so in the uk which is where they're based that's a really really big deal yeah it is so you want to go to the last and so floor. to yes to round this out um <laughs> i was telling matt right before we uh, started the call if we should change your order to leave on a end on a high note so maybe matt you, you might tell a joke or something after this one <laughs> 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 to, to raise morale but you know with all the excitement with with all that we have to be um anticipating and i'm excited about with new cars arrival and ruby and all the stuff we talk about we have to also remember that this is a paradigm shift this is that complete transformation and electric cars are hard to make we've talked about in the past i think in week one matt we mentioned some of the um, recalls and issues with software for the id3 here, GM now has a recall on Chevy Bolt batteries. I think there's only been about five or six bolts that have caught fire from the battery pack. And, you know, their batteries are made by LG Chem. So this isn't a startup. This is General Motors and LG Chem, like ginormous, like multinational companies with tons of experience. And they're having troubles. <laughs> and they actually don't know the root of the problem yet. So they're recalling about 68,000 bolts. And they've also had, from what I gather, a software update or kind of guidance to not charge your car all the way. And I think the easiest way they started with was what they call like the hill. Um, I forget what to call it. It's basically a mode that says, I live at the top of a mountain. So when I pull out of the garage, I'm going to be going downhill. So don't charge past like 90 because I'm going to charge for a couple of miles going downhill. So by engaging that mode, you never charge past 90 and that really helps reduce the risk. So from what I gather, if there's some thermal runaway effectors, there are some concerns with the batteries being charged fully. And um, so we hope they figure that out. I hope Bolt owners are, you know, kind of in the know about this and understand what's, what's, what's going on. Make sure you talk to GM if there's any concerns. And hopefully they sort this out because the Bolt is one of those cars I was happy they made. And I'm hoping there's a Bolt too. So yeah. it's important, I think. Yeah. I mean, you, you said it well. It's like I'm... This is not great news. And I know there's going to be people that will be like the schadenfreude, haha, big auto failing again. And it's like, for me, it's the exact opposite. It's like, oh, big auto, come on. <laughs> it's, 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 they're going to get through this and I hope it doesn't like give them too much of a black eye, but it, it does make me sad when I see this happening. Cause it's like, we need companies like GM to succeed at what they're doing. So I, I'm right there with you on, this is not the, the greatest end. <laughs> for the episode <laughs> yeah no so yeah you, you think of a joke think of a joke i don't, um, <laughs> I don't have any good jokes <laughs> just really bad puns that's that's all i'm good at <laughs> yeah the, the really troubling part with this is not just gm it's like lg chem and yeah. a lot of bad a lot of ev makers are not going to be building their own batteries like tesla is like that that's like 10 years down the road in terms of optimization step one build a car prove you can do it sell them and then slowly vertically integrate and build up. So in the early days, people are going to be buying from the Samsung and LG chems and BYDs of the world. So um, this is one of those things that has some pretty resounding implications. And so that's what they figured out. But um, I think they will. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's important to remember the good and the bad and to remember that this is a brave new world. We never really have had a world where there was electric vehicles in any kind of volume. And now countries like Norway I think one in two cars being sold is is an EV. So yeah. we've come a long way in just a very small amount of time. And that's maybe the positive to, to all of this. But um, 
also this is the point matt if this was a live show we would have comments and we could joke and have some fun with wh whatever people were saying so that is our plan right we're in episode yes. two now i don't know how many more of these we have to get through again we had a lot of technical troubles getting started yes. with this one too but yeah that's why i didn't want to do it tonight that's why i didn't want to do it tonight was because <laughs> it's like i knew we we're gonna have more technical difficulties it's like i just want to get at least one more under our belt before we start doing this live yep so maybe next week and uh, thank you <laughs> yeah thank you for everybody who subscribed and maybe next week yeah and also i apologize if audio and video quality isn't the best um i'm in my car and uh hopefully we can get by but thank you and uh been a pleasure as always matt any final thoughts you want to leave us with no just that people should subscribe stay tuned we'll be here every week we'll be doing this if you have ideas for topics we should be covering drop them in the comments shoot us a note let us know it's a good point very good point we should do a community post early in the week and people can maybe leave leave their there uh, comments there that'll be the easiest way to keep that tidy wonderful as always absolute pleasure matt um we're two in now yeah. <laughs> this is a thing this is a show yes we got a show now it's official <laughs> <laughs> one is an accident you know one anybody could hit record one time but twice come on all right it's a big deal so thanks thanks so much for watching everybody well we'll see you next week